Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Eco Tingo Eco voor de Daily Minutes nummer 1126 met een uitzending voor vandaag 5 november 2017. Dit is het bulletin van zondag. Today's bulletin is completely in English. De uitzending van vandaag is geheel in het Engels. From Australia, this is VK1WIA and the weekly WIA amateur radio news service on RF, internet streaming and text at wia.org.au. Now, special interest groups low down in the Canadian Radio Ham's 10 microwatt ERP 8.27 kHz signal heard in the UK. Shortwave listener Paul Nicholson in Todd Morden, UK, has successfully received an extremely low frequency transmission on 8.27 kHz. From Joe Craig, VO1NA in Newfoundland, the ARRL reports. For Joe Craig, VO1NA in Torbay, Newfoundland, things have been pretty exciting lately on very low frequencies. He's among the early MFLF and VLF experimenters in North America, active even before Canada allocated amateur radio bands in that part of the spectrum. He believes he's accomplished a first for a Canadian radio amateur on October 22nd when his very VLF, very QRP signal on 8.27 kHz that'd be the 36 kilometer band, was copied in the UK. Now, even more amazing, the transmission path was more than 3,500 kilometers. The power was just 10 microwatts ERP. Now, when you're that low, there's only one way to go, and that's up. So, South African digital EME QSOs on the 22nd of October at 15.46 GMT, Alex ZS6 EME recorded the first ever digital EME QSO with HB9Q on 10 GHz. This was the first microwave EME QSO on such a high band from South Africa. They used the new digital mode QRA64D while using only 50 watts at the feed of his 1.5 meter dish. And later on the 23rd, Alex completed 10 more EME QSOs on 10 gig. On the 24th, he was able to make the first ever South African digital EME QSO on 5.7 gig with PA3DZL, as well as seven more QSOs on the 5.7 gig band. In late September, University of Alaska Fairbanks researcher Chris Fallon, KL3WX, was attempting to produce an RF-induced airglow, or artificial aurora, using the high-frequency active auroral research program, HARP, facility in Alaska to warm up the atmosphere. Clouds hampered his experiment, but KL3WX alerted his Twitter followers that he also had embedded a few slow-scan television frames in the powerful HARP signal, which were then copied in British Columbia and in Colorado. The SSTV images, aside from being a fun way to engage hams in some of the ionosphere heating science performed at HARP, will be useful for understanding radio propagation from Arctic or high-latitude sources, Fallon told the ARRL. HARP consists of multiple transmitters feeding 180 phased arrays and is capable of producing 3.6 megawatts of RF. HARP's signal is essentially aimed straight up. Worldwide Special Interest Group's Final Frontier, AMSAT North American President Joe Spear, K6WAO, has announced the next phase of AMSAT's CubeSat program called GOLF. Not the first space golf program, as back in February of 71, Apollo 14 astronaut Alan Shepard famously took two golf balls along with him to the moon, making him the first person to play golf on another world. As an initial step in this new golf program, the AMSAT North America Board of Directors approved the submission of a NASA CubeSat launch initiative proposal for the Golf T satellite project. GOLF, an acronym for Greater Orbit, Larger Footprint, is a crucial step towards fulfilling AMSAT strategic goals involving high-altitude, wide-access satellite missions. Now, Worldwide Special Interest Group's IOTA. Two Canadian amateurs will operate as VY0ERC from the Eureka Amateur Radio Club station on Ellesmere Island. IOTA reference NA008 until the 10th of November. 
and active is Guinea until the 1st of December. Look for 3XY 3D slash P to operate mainly CW from Kassar Island AF051 from the 2nd of November through 1st of December and you can QSL via F50ZC. International news with thanks to IARU, RSGB, SARL, Southgate AR Club, ARRL, Amateur Radio Newsline, NZART, WIA Local News Service VK7, VK3PC and the WW Sources of the WIA. I'm Shirley, VK5YL. One of our last surviving Bletchley Park listeners dies. The Forces Network reports that one of the last surviving Bletchley Park listeners who intercepted and passed Nazi messages on to Allied codebreakers at Bletchley Park has died. Alison Robbins, 97, taught herself Morse code and German during World War II and stayed up all night eavesdropping messages from U-boats around the British coast. She rarely spoke about her wartime years that were spent in isolated points around the coastline, intercepting messages from enemy fleets. Pope asks spaceman life's big questions in ISS live chat. Pope Francis chatted with six astronauts at the International Space Station, ISS, on Thursday, kicking off the rare interview with a philosophical question on man's place in the universe. Italian astronaut Paola Nespoli, 60, admitted that, despite the bird's eye view of Earth, he too remained perplexed, while American Mark Bandy Hay said seeing the planet from space made them realise how fragile we are. The pontiff sat at a Vatican desk facing a widescreen television on which the astronauts from America, Russia and Italy could be seen floating together in their blue suits. Good afternoon. Or good evening. I imagine time passes differently at the space station, right? The Pope quipped. Astronomy makes us think about the universe's boundless horizons and prompts questions such as, where do we come from? Where are we going? He mused. Our aim here is to spread knowledge, but the more we learn, the more we realise we do not know, admitted Nespoli, who was on his third trip into space. Jordan's first satellite, JY-1-SAT. During the final satellite integration training for Jordan's first satellite, JYI-SAT, the team was supported by His Royal Highness Crown Prince Al Hussein bin Abdullah II. The JYI-SAT mission was proposed by Jordanian students who participated in the first batch of the cooperation program with NASA after which the interns had suggested the design and launch of their first Jordanian CubeSat. Not the Guinness but a storm a-brewing. The names Ophelia and Brian won't be forgotten for quite some time in Ireland. Amateur Radio Newsline have reported on two storms which swept over that nation in mid-October, with Brian coming on the heels of its deadlier counterpart. Ophelia's arrival generated Ireland's first severe weather alert in history and according to the Irish Independent newspaper even created the biggest wave recorded off the Irish coast during a weather event. Wonder what the size was? Unfortunately it also left three dead. Although the amateur radio emergency network was not formally called up for the storm, members nonetheless took to whatever repeaters they could find or made use of simplex calling channels to check on the well-being of people in their communities and beyond. John Ronan, EI7IG, told AR Newsline the hams had earlier tracked the storm and advised AREN members to prepare for water shortages, outages and to get ready their go kits, just in case. A successful contact has been made between Beaconsfield State School Mackay and astronaut Paulo Naspoli using callsign IR0ISS. The contact lasted about nine and a half minutes, was telebridged via IK1SLD. Okay, India Romeo 0, India Sierra Sierra, India Kilo 1, Sierra Lima Delta, Claudio Casale. Good morning, Paolo, buongiorno. Your signal is now loud and clear. Today, from Italy, we introduce the Beaconsfield State School uh, located in Queensland, uh, Australia. 
Are you ready for first question, Paolo? Over. Radio Italia Kilo 1, Sierra Lima Delta, Dissento Forte Chiaro. Go ahead with the question of Beaconfield State School. Hi, this is Aiden. What does Australia look like from space? Over. Aiden, we, we just flew uh, over Australia not a long time ago. I mean, Australia, it's an incredible continent. Uh, it has everything in it. Uh, the, the center is uh, red and uh, kind of desertic. The coasts are beautiful. The great reef is incredible. And the south part. So it's, uh, it's uh, really an amazing place. And I've been in Australia a few times, but every time I fly over, I want to go there more. And I will. There were 13 questions from the students, leaving time for science teacher Anna Berrigan to thank Polo before the audience broke into spontaneous loud applause. About 300 students, parents and teachers attended the school, which had set up space-themed displays with some students dressed as astronauts. Immediately after, the Mackay Tropical Stargazer Group had everyone in the school grounds at large telescopes for planet viewing, and one highlight was seeing the ISS pass at low elevation over Queensland, giving most their first look at it in orbit. Deze inmiddels zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2 NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald. Alle mail is welkom op het adres x xdvme Dat is ook te vinden rechts boven aan de webpagina van de uitzending in www.pa0ete.nl. Dit is Papa Alpha 0 Echo Tango Echo. De Daily Minutes toont iedere dag weer aan de hand van schokkende voorbeelden hoe een hobby mensenlevens kan veranderen. De Daily Minutes kwam tot stand mede dankzij de stichting Scope Hobbyfonds. En microfoon naar retour.